Western art. Their heavy reliance on symbolism was a precursor to the symbolism found in Renaissance paintings and practically all art since then. Their architectural methods of creating bricks and preparing building materials informed the process for creating architectural monuments that still endure today. Egyptian hieroglyphs were one of the world's earliest scripts. While our current alphabet does not necessarily make use of pictures like the Egyptian hieroglyphs did, our society can certainly relate to the desire to communicate with images. And while the cult of celebrity worship is often considered a contemporary phenomenon, one can find surprising similarities in the ancient Egyptians' worship of pharaohs and animal gods. The period of ancient Egyptian art lasted from about 3000 BC to 30 BC, and is generally separated into three kingdoms, the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. Egyptians created the first ever portraits of individuals. The sizes of different figures was highly symbolic in ancient Egyptian art. Pharaohs, for example, were often the largest figures in any painting, symbolizing their dominance and power. The smallest figures were usually peons, the little people as it were. Egyptians' use of color was also highly suggestive. Men who worked outside were often red, whereas women and indoor workers were painted yellow. Egyptian painting made use of the same mixed perspective found in Stone Age art. This meant that different body parts and objects in the same scene were viewed from different angles to make each feature distinctly recognizable. For example, feet were always drawn in a profile or side view because they would be less recognizable if you looked at them head on. This conveyed more information about subjects than if painters had only used one perspective in their work. In paintings of people, Eyes and shoulders were painted in frontal perspective, while faces, waists, and limbs were shown in profile view. The style of ancient Egyptian painting is fairly easy to identify, even if you don't know much about art. One thing that makes it so recognizable is its flatness. There is no horizon or vanishing point, and the forms in Egyptian painting are completely flat. Instead of a two-point perspective, parallel lines called registers were used to order the subjects in a piece. Registers separate scenes and provide a sense of depth. For example, when two figures overlap, the one on top is closer and the one underneath is further away. The absence of a register indicates chaos and occurs in battle and hunting scenes. Not all of the art of ancient Egypt was two-dimensional. Sculpture and pottery played important roles in the artistic development of the region as well. Egyptians are known for building in colossal scale. One form of sculpture that ancient Egyptians invented was the obelisk, a tall rectangular monument with a pyramid-like point. Egyptian obelisks were tributes to the sun god Ra and are thought to symbolize petrified sun rays. Ancient Romans loved the obelisk design and created many obelisks of their own. The tallest remaining Egyptian obelisk is the obelisk of Hatshepsut, a female ruler who ruled for almost 20 years during the 15th century BC. The obelisk of Hatshepsut is 97 feet tall, inscribed from top to bottom with hieroglyphs, and like all Egyptian obelisks, was carved from a single piece of stone. Today, monumental obelisks can be found in many capital cities of the world. The United States obelisk is the Washington Monument. Another Egyptian innovation was the stone column one of the most significant staples of ancient architecture, and which we still often use today. Greek and Roman columns were inspired by these ancient counterparts. Egyptian columns were even topped with floral decorations called capitals, like the Corinthian columns of later times. The terrace temple of Hatshepsut features long rows of columns called colonnades, which would become an architecture staple in the classical period. 
Perhaps the best known piece of Egyptian sculpture is the Great Sphinx of Giza, that massive human head on a lion's body, the giant face with its missing nose, the body with its long stone lines. Smaller sculptures carried on the themes of colossal tributes representing gods and figures who also took animal forms. In addition to three-dimensional sculptures, Egyptians carved sunk relief sculptures into flat surfaces. These sunk relief sculptures often followed the same aesthetic as Egyptian painting, flat images featuring multiple perspectives and sized according to status and hierarchy. The Amarna period from 1085 to 1055 BC was a high point in ancient Egyptian art because of its increased attention to detail and full use of artistic materials. In painting, more figures were included in each scene, with some figures overlapping to create a sense of movement and urgency. The human figures in art from this period were more stylized as well. Details were more pronounced than in earlier Egyptian art particularly Pharaoh Akhenaten, are portrayed as softer and more feminine. You would think that with all the art that ancient Egyptians were creating, they would have been one of the first civilizations with art museums. This was definitely not the case. Most of ancient Egypt's sculptures, pottery, and symbolic paintings were hidden away from view. Egyptian art was not meant for the living, but intended as sacred tomb decoration for pharaohs and other higher-ups as a way to honor them. While you and I can easily find amazingly preserved examples of ancient Egyptian art in many art and historical museums, the ancient Egyptians basically had to be dead. Not to mention fairly important within society to get close to the Egyptian art we prize today. The art that wealthy, living Egyptians did have access to included amulets, jewelry, cosmetic containers, pottery, and beautiful furniture. The impact that ancient Egyptian art has had on civilization since the 3rd century AD is truly profound. Egyptian sculpture, architectural innovation, and symbolism would help shape the arts of ancient Rome and Greece, and is still evident in contemporary art.